The cranial nerve technique was developed in order to help heal cranial nerve loss of the different senses. It works by accessing the cranial nerves through the spine. Rather than giving an osseous adjustment, we were working with the center of the brain for cranial nerves and directly affecting them through stimulation of the spine. I have found this to be valuable in restoring hearing loss and improving vision. I personally had hearing loss after scuba diving 110 feet deep underwater, and my hearing was immediately restored as a result of the treatment. I had a patient who had blurry vision after a car accident, and her vision became instantly clear again. Another patient with Bell's palsy couldn't pucker her lips. I adjusted the reflex point for the seventh cranial nerve, and she was able to pucker up after a single treatment. We will now review the standard cranial nerve tests. The first cranial nerve is the olfactory nerve. For this test, what we do is take a cotton ball and some alcohol, and then occlude one nostril and place it under the nostril. Do you smell that? Yes. OK. And now occlude the other nostril. Do you smell that? The second cranial nerve is the optic nerve. The first test that we'll be doing is for perimetry. I want you to tell me when you first see this pen. I see it. OK. And again. I see it. Good. Normal is 180 degrees. The next test is the Weber test. For that one, again, we hit the tuning fork and tell me which side is loudest. They're the same. Since they're the same, that test is normal. If one side was louder, that would be a positive test. Next, we test the, the vestibular section. Please stand up. Close your eyes and stand on one foot. We're checking for loss of balance here. As we can see, she's losing balance, which is a positive test. The twelfth cranial nerve is the hypoglossal nerve. The patient sticks out her tongue and moves it from side to side. Note for any restrictions in motion. Very good. The cranial nerve technique is a simple way to affect cranial nerve function by touching reflex points on the skull while stimulating the spine. First, during history and examination, evaluate the patient for sensory symptoms including hearing loss, myopia, tic de la rue, and so on. Perform the appropriate cranial nerve tests. Second, locate the reflex point on the skull and place the patient's finger on the point. You may confirm that this point is out of balance through muscle testing. If it is out of balance, the arm will appear weak. Test this point with the patient's body in flexion, extension, hyperextension, right rotation, left rotation, right side bending, and left side bending. With their eyes open and closed, and while they look up, down, right, left, and diagonal. Place the patient in the posture and eye position that tests weak. Now adjust. Now I'd like to demonstrate the correct procedure for muscle testing. First find a strong indicator muscle. The most convenient one is the pectoralis major clavicular. This chest muscle helps bend and turn the arm at the shoulder. Have the patient hold their arm straight out, level with the shoulder, palm out and thumb pointed towards the feet. Applied kinesiology is a technique I have found to be useful in my practice. If you prefer not to use muscle testing, the cranial nerve technique will still be successful. After performing the cranial nerve tests, simply locate the appropriate point, place your patient's finger on it. Now I'm going to take you on an anatomical tour of the skull. This is the frontal bone here, parietal bone. This is the 
temporal squama, the mastoid process of the temporal bone, and this is the occipital bone. I will now demonstrate the cranial nerve technique reflex points. The test points for the cranial nerves are bilateral. That is, they may occur on either the right or left sides of the skull. The CNT sequence for treating all the cranial nerves is T2, T4, and T6 in three phases of respiration. The first cranial nerve reflex point is the olfactory. That's one inch superior, one inch lateral to the EOP on the right occiput. The sixth cranial nerve is the abducens. This rotates the eyeball outward. Test points are three inches superior and one and one half inches lateral to the EOP on the right upper quadrant or left upper quadrant of the occiput. That's three inches superior, one and a half inches lateral to the EOP, right upper quadrant of the occiput. The eleventh cranial nerve is the spinal accessory nerve. The cranial portion runs to motor the pharynx, upper larynx, uvula, and palate. The spinal portion controls the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles. Symptoms include torticollis, difficulty rotating the head, shrugging, atrophy of the sternocleidomastoid, and difficulty in raising the head. Test points for the spinal accessory nerve are one half inch superior to squamosal six on the right or left. The eleventh reflex point for the spinal accessory nerve is one and a half inches superior to the posterior pinna of the right ear. The cranial nerve technique may not be appropriate or sufficient treatment for all nerve-related disorders, but in many cases can affect miraculous and instantaneous results. Now I'll demonstrate the reflex point for the optic nerve. We'll also demonstrate an adjustment for the cranial nerve technique. The optic nerve reflex point is one half inch inferior. Hold your arm up, please, and hold. Now touch this point right there. Do you have any problem with vision? Mm -hmm. Okay, what is your problem? Um, I wear contacts because I'm very, very nearsighted. Okay. Now we're going to just take a deep breath in and let it out. Keep your hand there, hold your arm up, and hold. Good. You notice any difference in your vision? Oh my goodness, yeah. I do. Really? Yeah. What do you see? What's the difference? Well, I was, I was looking outside through your blinds. The blinds just kind of focused. Really? Yeah, serious. Amazing. Yeah, it's like they're moving. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that's amazing. Great. Mm. Goodness. <laughs> More sharp. And my head kind of feels kind of lightheaded in a way. Uh, I don't know. That, that was really a powerful experience right there. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Now I'll be demonstrating the reflex point for the auditory nerve. It's right at squamosal three on the right or left side. Hold your arm up and hold. Touch right there, please. Giving the adjustment now for the eighth cranial nerve. Hold your arm up and hold. That one is for hearing. Do you notice any change in your hearing? I'm noticing a certain buzz in the room that I hadn't noticed before. Ah, interesting. Mm -hmm. The cranial nerve technique is a new method of getting powerful releases related to the five senses in a way previously unattainable. While the treatment may not be appropriate in all cases of cranial nerve-related disorders, in many cases, I've had immediate and astonishing results. I hope that you will benefit from the cranial nerve technique in helping your patients to achieve a happier, healthier lifestyle. Thank you.